Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you a full face of my favorite discontinued makeup. So this video is pretty different from most of my videos in that I usually focus on newer releases or at least products that you can still pick up, but I figured you guys probably have some of these products in your collection. And recently I've been doing a lot of videos kind of revisiting my existing collection and thinking about my favorite products. And so I thought it'd be fun to just do a whole video dedicated to that. So we can sort of reflect upon how makeup has changed and also not get too caught up in what's new and shiny, but instead think about what products are really tried and true. So if you're interested in going on this trip down memory lane with me, then just stick around. So I do have an event to go to later today, so I'm gonna do this video in a get ready with me style. So we're gonna start with foundation. And so here I have the Dior Air Flash Foundation. And this has truly been a holy grail foundation for many people. A lot of folks were really devastated when Dior decided to discontinue this. And so I actually picked it up after it was announced that it was gonna be discontinued. I have this in shade 321. And I have to say the hype is real for this one. So I went off camera to spray this on my beauty blender because it is a bit messy of a product. So I think the reason Dior probably discontinued this is because this air flash packaging in terms of being in this aerosol container does carry with it a lot of cons in the sense that it is kind of messy to spray it out. I did it over a sink and I found that it did leave some staining in my sink, so I would be a little bit careful where you spray this because it does get a bit in the air. So I can understand why they discontinued this product, but as you can see, it is really, really beautiful. It's really easy to understand why this is for many people the best foundation. I mean, it's just so beautiful. Like that was just one light layer over the skin and it's remarkably light on the skin, like you don't really feel like you have much on the skin, but at the same time, it's so perfecting. Like my skin has been super angry lately. I have a lot of hyperpigmentation from acne scarring. There's a lot of stuff happening here, but I feel like just patting this onto my skin has really easily and quickly just evened out my whole complexion and made everything look really seamless. And it has just such a beautiful finish. I feel like with this foundation, especially if I'm not looking for super long wear, I don't even necessarily have to set it because as you can see, it's not really matte, but it's also not too luminous. So it has a very beautiful, healthy skin-like finish. Really perfect for special events. So that's why for me, this is my favorite foundation that has been unfortunately discontinued. I do hope that they figure out a way to reformulate this that doesn't involve the spray can. And if they do that, this might be overall one of the best foundations on the market. Next for concealer, we have the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. This is a little bit of a cheat because this has just been reformulated, so it's not exactly discontinued the same way the Air Flash has been discontinued but I still featured it today because I don't really have another concealer that has been discontinued that I really love in my collection. So we're just gonna go in with this. And what I really enjoy about this concealer is that it has really good coverage while being really lightweight on the skin. So in that sense, it's kind of similar to that Air Flash in that it just feels really lightweight and you don't need a lot of product to get good coverage, but at the same time it is very perfecting on the skin. And I have this in shade 2N. I'm also going to use this as eye primer today because I don't really have a discontinued eye primer to talk about. Fortunately, based on the reviews I've seen thus far, it does seem like this formula is pretty similar in the reformulated version, so people have not been complaining too much about that. So that's great. I think you can basically get something very similar still on the market. Alrighty, so moving on to brows, I'm a little embarrassed to show you guys this, but this is a long comb brow pencil from, I don't even know, like early 2000s or something. This is incredibly old. This was like my OG holy grail brow pencil 
for a while I only used this and I repurchased this this several times in like you know the 2010s or so but yeah this is very old I've mostly kept this nubbin around just for comparison swatches in case I want to find a dupe for this but I haven't actually used this pencil in the longest time so this is kind of a special moment that I'm sharing with you guys on screen it's definitely been at least five years since I used this pencil and it's still working pretty well. So what I like about this pencil is it's like a cream to powder formula. And so as you can see, once you brush it out, it leaves a really nice kind of powder effect on the skin. To me, this is sort of similar to the Gucci pencil that I use a lot nowadays. They both have that sort of powder effect. And for me, I just really love that kind of effect on an everyday basis. I'm not really trying to get super precise hair-like strokes, but I do want my brows just to kind of look soft and filled in. And this definitely gives you that. I will say this color is a little bit warmer than what I would go for nowadays. I feel like this was back before they had really good options for people with black hair. So definitely my brows are looking a little bit more reddish than they would nowadays. But overall, I'm impressed. This has sort of held up a lot better than I thought. And I think my brows look pretty nice and soft overall. The other brow product that has since been discontinued is the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. This is their original one that does have a lot of fibers in it. I think they have since reformulated and come out with a version that has less fiber in it. So this one that I have in the shade Granite is basically on its last legs. I don't really feel very much product left in the tube, but I think it still has enough to add a little bit of depth to my brows and add some fibers as well. I originally bought this because I just heard so many rave reviews about it from Michelle Wong. And so I decided I wanted to try it for myself. And for a while, I did really love this. This was kind of my go-to. But because this is so pricey, I haven't actually repurchased this since their reformulation because I heard that their reformulation wasn't necessarily as good in terms of the fibers in the product. So now I just kind of rarely bring this out because it's so close to being finished. But today is kind of a special day, so I'm going to use up what I can in this product. And I think it still actually looks pretty good. Even though it's dried out a lot, it still deposits a good amount of product just to add a little bit more volume to the brows. So now let's get into powder. So I don't have a powder formula that I love that's been completely discontinued, but I did want to bring out this Look of Love palette from Charlotte Tilbury because I absolutely love this powder in it. This is just her normal airbrush flawless powder, which you can get in a full size. But this palette is basically discontinued. I mean, it's still, I think you can buy a few more of these on Charlotte's website. So the light version of this has completely sold out, but this deeper version called Glowing Beauty does still have some available. So I would highly recommend running and picking one of these out if you haven't already. This is just the perfect curation of a full face of makeup that you can get just in a very small compact. And all of the formulas in this are really impeccable. Like I really love this bronzer as well. And these eyeshadows, blush, and highlight are beautiful also. This instant look of love in a palette was the first time that she included her powder in these. And before and since this release, usually she'll put a highlighter here, which in my opinion is less useful. So even though you can get this powder separately, I would highly recommend it in this compact. It's a way more affordable way to try out her formulas. And so to put that on, I will be using some of my discontinued brushes in today's video. So I'm basically only going to draw from these brushes, which I absolutely love, but have been very sadly discontinued. Most of these are from Wayne Goss, and then we also have Sonia G's original Kayaki set and an ABH brush thrown in for good measure. So for face powder products, I absolutely loved this set from Wayne Goss. This was his artist series that's inspired by calligraphy brushes. It has these really beautiful wooden handles and really soft squirrel hair. 
So I'm so glad I picked up these brushes. They've since been discontinued very sadly. And I was actually checking Beautylish's website right before filming this video, and it seems like a lot of Wayne Goss's brushes have been discontinued, which makes me really sad. Like I know he's sort of pivoted towards just doing a lot of makeup products instead, which are lovely as well, but I absolutely loved his makeup brushes. In fact, some of his eye brushes in particular are among my all-time favorites. So that did make me very sad to see. But I will definitely continue using his brushes, and especially in this video, they will be featured very prominently. This Artist Large brush, which you can get this in goat hair still, in a black handle on his website, um, but this is one of my favorite brushes just for all over face powder and makes really quick work of it. And for me, I have pretty dry skin, so I usually need to be careful not to have too much powder. So I feel like this kind of brush is perfect for just the right amount of pickup. I also really love this Artist Medium brush for under the eyes. It's basically the perfect size and shape for that. So as you can see, it just fits in really nicely in that under eye area. And also if you want to put a little powder just around the eyes, this is just perfect for getting into those smaller areas. So before we go any further, my lips are starting to feel super dry, so let's get some lipstick on them. I have three lipsticks here. One is just a discontinued shade and the other is a discontinued formula. So first off, in terms of discontinued shades, we have this beauty from Charlotte Tilbury. This is Sweet Blossom in her Kissing Formula. This was a Lunar New Year release a couple years back, and this remains one of my all-time favorite lipsticks and Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. Her Kissing Formula is one of my favorite formulas in general, and I find this red is just perfect if you want something that's red but still a little bit muted. So it has enough peachiness, enough pink in there that it doesn't really scream red lips when you have it on. And so I actually really like this on sort of a more everyday basis when I want to look a little bit more glammed up. The other two lipsticks are from Pat McGrath's Lux Transformula. So this used to be her main satin lipstick formula. I have this in Unnatural Natural, which is sort of a deep brown burgundy, and also in 35 millimeter. And I'm really sad that she discontinued these and also sad that I only picked up these two before they were discontinued because now she has her matte trans formula still, which I love. But in terms of satin lipsticks, which is what I typically go for, she has her metallic blitz trance, which I'm not a huge fan of because it's a little bit too glittery for me. Then she has her divinals, which are a little bit more like a lip balm formula, kind of sheer, also a little bit glittery for my taste. And then recently she released her Satin Allure lipsticks with her Bridgerton collection, and then a few new ones for her Love collection. And I just don't really like that formula as much as this original Lux Trance. The new Satin Allure is a little bit too silicone-y for my taste, whereas I feel like this is more of what you kind of typically think of for a satin lipstick. It's highly pigmented, very comfortable on the lips, very long lasting. So I am very sad that these are gone. So for today's look, I think I'm gonna first start out with 35 millimeter because I feel like that's gonna go well with sort of the deep jewel tones in this dress. And I'm gonna first line my lips with this mini Ross lip liner from Oma Beauty. This has been my go-to for some of these deeper toned looks. So that was not the best lip liner job, but that's okay, we're just gonna go with it. Ooh, it does match perfectly with 35 millimeter, huh? So there we go. Isn't that such a beautiful red lip? And again, I think it goes perfectly with the color of this dress. So turning down the brightness a little bit, let's get into eyeshadow. So I'm very excited about this part because I get to whip out one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time, which is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I was actually really excited to see that Alicia Archer used this in a video recently because I was already planning on filming this discontinued makeup video 
And anytime I have an opportunity to pull out Metropolis, I always take it because this still is just one of the most beautiful palettes in my collection. You can see there's just so many directions you can take this color story. It really has everything you need from more everyday neutral tones to really bright warm tones to some of these beautiful blues and greens. And especially whenever I'm wearing green, I always think of Metropolis because it's just such a fun palette for green looks. And I'm really sad that Natasha Denona discontinued this palette because it's one of the best values as well. Like even though this was super expensive, like $130 or something, you get 28 shades in her midi size, which is just incredible. Since then, she has not done any releases in this kind of size, but this palette is just so much fun and it's so beautiful. So many different textures and directions you can go in. So to start this look out, I'm going to go in with my all-time favorite crease brush, which is the Wayne Goss number 16 brush. If you guys have watched pretty much any of my videos, you will have heard about this brush. I am really sad that this brush has been discontinued. I did buy a backup of this before it got discontinued, which I'm so, so glad that I did. That's the only time I've ever bought a brush backup. So that's in my cabinet in case I ever need to pick it up. But if you want a dupe for this, the rougher number 16 is quite similar, so I would highly recommend that as well. But I am very sad that this is no longer available from Wayne Goss. So to start out this look, I'm going to go in with this light shade over here because it's sort of the lightest, most neutral option, even though it is quite yellow. And I'm just going to work this into the crease area lightly and blend it out carefully. Even though the rougher brush is a very good dupe in terms of size and shape, I do find these Wayne Goss eye brushes to be just a little bit softer and easier to use. So very sad that it had to go away. So there you go. That just made very quick work of just a light and hazy transition shade. Next up, I cannot open this palette without going into Lethal, which is this avocado green shade over here. It is very old and kind of crumbly right now, so it's not really the best performing shade by any means at this point. So I do sometimes question whether I should still be using it. This palette is a couple years old at this point, but it is just such a fun, pretty color. Like, look at that. I feel like brands nowadays don't often go into this sort of shade that's a little bit pukey looking like it's not exactly a pretty shade but it's a very special shade and i think it just goes so well with any sort of green look but yeah i don't know if you guys can see but definitely on this side the pigment is balling up a little bit so i'm trying to be very careful with my brush and blend out the pigment balls so yeah the quality on this shade definitely could be improved but I still love the color. And to brush away some of those little pigment balls, I'm going in with the Wayne Goss number 17 brush, which is a little bit smaller. It's good for slightly more detailed work. So next up, I'm gonna go into Royal with that Wayne Goss number 17 brush. And I'm going to concentrate this a little bit on the outer portion of the eyes. And I think Royal was a color that Natasha Denona put in her mini Metropolis. She, in case you're curious, the mini Metropolis does draw entirely from the Metropolis. So if you want a somewhat similar color story, you can definitely draw from that. And I do have a video where I use all of the shades in the Metropolis palette that are also in the mini Metropolis, in case you're interested and what kind of look you can get from those shades. But one thing to note with this palette is these sorts of shades in her cream to powder, which is most of the mattes in this palette, do show up on the lids a lot lighter and more vibrant than they show up in pan. Like this shade looked super deep in pan, but as you can see, it's actually not that deep on the lids. I'm kind of gonna put some of this in the inner portion as well. Just getting a little bit of a halo eye vibe. Ooh, it's been a while since I've done a halo eye. So next up, let's see. I do kind of wish I could deepen up this look a little bit because 
One thing I will note is there isn't as much depth as you might think in this palette because I just went in with this shade, which is one of the deepest shades, and there's not that many shades that are deeper. Let's try though. I'm gonna go into this shade in the corner over here with my Wayne Gloss number 19 brush. This is also one of my all-time favorite brushes. It's just the perfect wispy, soft, outer corner brush for adding a little bit of depth to any look. I can't actually say this shade is much deeper than the previous one, so I'm not sure if we're gonna get that much depth. Let me actually go in with Troop. Maybe that will bring us a bit more depth. We're just experimenting today, playing around with shades. Okay, I think that added a little bit of something. Alrighty, next up I'm gonna go in with my Wayne Goss number no. six brush. This is a really soft squirrel hair brush that's been discontinued for the longest time. Wayne Goss used to have a bunch of squirrel hair as well, but then he kind of switched over to all goat. So I haven't actually used this brush in quite a while. I'm gonna use this in the shade Orium though today because this is basically my favorite shade in this whole palette. It has a dual chromatic effect to it and it's just so beautiful on the lids. It is a bit flaky though, so I am finding that it is falling a bit as I'm putting this on my lids. I might have to go in with a finger. Whew, getting a bit of a dust storm over here. Okay, yeah, I do think we're gonna need a little bit of finger to sort of press that on. There we go. But isn't that shade so pretty? I really hope she re releases Orium at some point. Definitely my favorite shade in this palette. Alrighty, I don't know what's happening with this look, but I'm still digging it. So now I'm gonna go in with my Wayne Goss number no. four brush. This is also one of the squirrel hair brushes. It's basically the same brush as the Wayne Goss number no. 17, but just in a different material. So I'm gonna go in with that teal shade again, just to sort of use that to deepen up the inner corners. Ooh, actually picked up a decent amount of pigment. This is also a brush I haven't used in quite a while. And then with that same brush, I'm going to just add back in a little bit more of the teal on the outer portion as well. You might be wondering what is happening with this look, and the answer is I do not know. <laughs> now going back in with some of Troop in that outer portion. And now with the Wayne Goss number no. 20 brush, which is the smallest little crease brush in his set, I'm gonna go back into that lethal avocado shade and just sweep a little bit more of that back into this crease area. Use this just to further blend out any edges. Also hopefully just cover up any mistakes as well. Alrighty, so I went off camera to finish off some cleanup work. I did get some fallout of some of the blue and teal colors, and so I really needed to clean that up so my whole face didn't turn green. But I think it's actually looking really nice now. I'm actually quite stoked for this look. It's turning out much more interesting than I anticipated. So now let's get into the lower lash line area. So for this part, I'm gonna dip into my Sonia G Kayaki One set. I am really sad that she discontinued this because I really, really love the original Kayaki set. I've brought this on so many trips. It's sort of a perfect little set for just for any sort of travel makeup look. The good thing, however, is I do think all of these brushes come in full sizes now. So if you want to DIY your own Kayaki set, you can do so. And I would highly recommend all these brushes. So let's first go in with the Jumbo Blender. And I'm gonna just go into that yellow shade that we started out with and just use this kind of generously all over the lower lash line area because I am going to diffuse this downward. I will say something that's a little annoying about this palette is you do have this insert over here, which you're constantly having to flip back and forth around if you're doing a makeup look but I think you can also remove it if you want. And then next up, let's see if I can make this avocado shade work. It's always at risk of balling up, but maybe I can get at least a little bit of it on this lower lash line area. And then I love going in with this flat definer brush for any more detailed work. So I'm gonna first go in with that teal shade and just concentrate this 
on the outer portion of the lower lash line. And that's such a fun shade. A little bit goes quite a long way with this shade. I'm also going to take a little bit of Troop just to sort of match it to the lid area. And this I'm going to really just concentrate in the outer portion. I'm going to bring it up actually and connect it with the top. And then I'm going to clean off that brush. And I feel like Orium is going to be a little bit too flaky for that lower lash line area. And so I'm going to go instead into Shield, which is kind of like the metallic version of Orium. It's a little bit deep, but let's see how it looks on the inner two thirds. It's funny, even though there's 28 shades in this palette, I feel like every time I open this palette, I always have to use these three shades. Like basically this little quad here is one of my favorites. And now with my Sonia G Mini Booster, which I love using for inner corner, let's bring in some of the gold. So there's a lot of really beautiful golds to choose from here. Just to finish things off with this quad, I'm going to take a little bit of Penny and just dab a tiny bit of that into the inner corner area. It is a little bit deeper than what I would typically go for for inner corner highlight. Let me actually also just take that flat definer again and take a tiny bit of Penny on that and see if I can just put that in the inner portion, sort of near the tear duct area, just for a little light there. All right, that's looking cute. Wow, isn't this look something? This is a really, really intense look. But to lighten up the inner corner area, I'm going to go into this queen shade and just take a little bit of that on top. So I went off camera to finish off the eye look. What do you guys think? So I don't have any discontinued eyeliners that I love, so I just went in with my M Cosmetics brush liner on the top and then some of this Verdetta Green eyeliner from KVD in my waterline. And then I used a little bit of the Champagne Sister Anne eyeliner in the inner thirds of my waterline. I have to say, overall, I'm really digging this eyeshadow look. It's a lot more involved and intense than what I originally anticipated, but it's really nice. It's been a while since I've done such a fun look. So now let's finish off the rest of the face. First off, I have this Marc Jacobs bronzer. This was one of my best of 2021 bronzers. I absolutely love this bronzer. And I'm very sad that Marc Jacobs Beauty unfortunately closed. And so this bronzer has been discontinued. I hope that someday they manage to restart or that this formulation comes back because it's a really lovely formulation and the shade Tantalize works really well on my skin tone. So for this, I'm going to go in with my Wayne Goss number 12 brush. This is a really nice brush for bronzer. And I'm just going to tap this in. Ooh, yikes. I picked up a little bit much, so that is a little deep, but it's okay. We'll gradually blend this out. I guess the shade is a little deep on me at the moment. But what I like about this bronzer is it's a really creamy, blendable, buildable texture. And the undertone is sufficiently neutral that I think it just works with a wide variety of looks. It doesn't look super orangey by any means. And it just provides a really natural shadow on the face. The formula also has a really nice coconutty scent, which I find to be quite pleasant. Sort of gives you those tropical vacation vibes. As you can see, it blends in really easily. In terms of this brush, I can't say this is my favorite bronzer brush ever, but it's a really nice size and shape for my face. I find a lot of the other bronzer brushes on the market, such as some of the ones from Sonia G, are just a little bit too big for my face if I want to really give myself a nice chiseled effect. But this is the perfect size. The only thing I don't like about this brush is the density does mean that it sometimes packs on a little bit too much pigment, like we saw on this side. Over here, it did a much better job because I was a little bit more careful and made sure I didn't pick up too much, but it can just be a little bit finicky as a result. Moving right along for blush, I brought out my NARS Orgasm on the Beach Collection palette. 
This is my favorite blush from NARS by far. I really love this baked gelée formulation in this. It's just really easy to use and really beautiful on the skin. It provides a nice healthy satin lit from within effect. So I really would recommend this palette. And even though this is discontinued, they just released their new spring blush palette, which has four shades that I think are basically the same formula as this and are really similar colors. So if you don't have this and are interested in it, I would recommend picking up that new palette. To apply this, I'm gonna go in with the classic face from the Keaki set. This is a really beautiful, very versatile, brush. So whenever I'm traveling, I always bring this with me because it's perfect for blush, bronzer, powder. You can even use it for highlighter. It just makes really quick work of anything on the cheek area. It's really nice and fluffy. And as you can see, it just blends things in so nicely. And I really love this shade in particular in this palette. It's just perfect for any look. It's relatively neutral, even though it looks really deep and kind of like a bronzer in pan, there's enough red to it that it adds a really nice, pretty flush on the cheeks. This is also a perfect shade if you wanna do more of a blush draping effect because it does melt into your contour very nicely. And before I forget, I should put on some nose contours. So I have here my ABH highlighter brush. So this is an oldie but goodie. This was one of my original makeup brushes back when ABH still did natural hair brushes. And so I'm gonna go back into that Marc Jacobs bronzer. And I really do enjoy this brush. I still use it to this day, which is saying a lot because I mostly only use Fude brushes nowadays but this was a really solid little release from ABH. And actually I wasn't quite getting the precision I wanted with the ABH brush, so now I'm going in with the Artist Small from Wayne Goss and just doing a little bit more nose contour. This brush is really good if you want a bit more precision in your placement. So the last product to talk about today is highlighter, and I do have two highlights to mention. One is my Pat McGrath Divine Rose Highlighter. This is overall the highlighter that I'm most sad that has been discontinued, because this is maybe my overall favorite highlighter from Pat McGrath, and one of my overall favorite highlighters in general. It's such a beautiful baked gelée formula, and it's just really nice and natural on the skin. You can very easily build it or sheer it out. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it on this Wayne Goss Artist Small Brush and just sweep this into the cheek area. Hopefully you guys can see that sort of subtle sheen that it offers. It's really beautiful if you want that kind of lift from within effect. And it does actually have a bit of a dual chromatic effect, but on the cheeks just looks very natural. And what I love about this is it's also just endlessly buildable. You don't really have to worry about going overboard with this product, especially when you apply it with such a soft brush like this. I do also want to call out the Becca highlighters though. I really love the formula that they had and you can still get some shades. Like I think they have a Smashbox Becca collab now where you can get their Champagne Glow shade. But this one over here, Spanish Rose Glow, has been discontinued even though it's incredibly gorgeous. Still one of my favorites. This has a really nice dual chromatic effect to it as well. So I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of that and just sweep this in the brow bone area just for a little hint of shine. There we go. And why not put a little bit of that on the nose bridge as well. And then whatever's left, I'm just gonna scatter on my forehead. All right, so here we have the final look. What do you guys think? I'm personally a huge fan of this look, especially this eyeshadow, even though it was a bit of a struggle at the beginning. It's just looking so intricate and beautiful. I'm really impressed with how this turned out. And then everything else is just looking really flawless as well. I absolutely love how my foundation's looking right now. It looks so seamless on the skin. 
I mean, with the powder and everything else, it definitely is starting to look a little bit more makeup-y than how it looked at the beginning. But still, overall, my skin just looks like satin, like silk. It's really, really pretty. All the other products also just performed so impeccably. I mean, all of these are my favorites for a reason. And so it was really fun to pull out these products and play with them today, since for some of these, it's really been a long time, far too long. So this was a nice reminder that they're still in my collection. I should still use them. So definitely let me know if you guys would be interested in continuing to see these sorts of products or other discontinued products in my videos. I know it's always a trade-off between getting the FOMO of a product that's been discontinued and that you can't buy versus if you already have this in your collection, sort of having that reminder to pick it up and play with it again. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. But that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.